Welcome to Rachel Skill Modeling. This is part four of the EFX Hellcat Scale 1 to 24. In part three, I uh, finished off the interior of, of the, in the fuselage. In this part, I'll be concentrating on the vanes. So let's jump into this. First of all, I'm concentrating on the middle section of the vanes and um, I'm painting the um, metal parts in 99 aluminium by Revel Aquacolor. The, um, main undercarriage part which is Tamiya's XF71 cockpit green. Now I'm actually running out of this colour so I've had to thin it down a little bit uh, to um, use it for the entire model. So you may see different uh, shades of green on this. It's the same colour, it's just a little bit thinner. So anyway, um, onto this part. The, the, there's various uh, little uh, substructures that you have to make up and so I'm just uh, making up the um, side panels here and they are self-explanatory really in the instructions they are, it looks complicated but once you get into it it's quite um, e easy to build up just follow the instructions with all the little bits that are going on and make sure you get certain parts the right way around once you do the side parts uh, the two main beams go in and they just slot in um, are, Along the edge, there is a, a recess point for them to fit into, um, so you shouldn't um, be confused uh, where they go. It is quite a snug fit, so um, make, make sure you do get them um, properly aligned. If not, it will affect the build later on. There's two side sports um, here um, are actually doubled up, so the next uh, sports going in. Pay attention to the uh, spindle that's sticking out here. Um, there is a connection that's going to be made onto it, so it's vital that you get this the right way around. The um, e e easiest way to look at it is um, the um, connection point to it should be facing you upwards. So time for a bit of weathering, and this is Tamiya's Weathering Master Series D, and we're going using the burnt uh, component here initially. So I'm just uh, placing this on. Um, Lightly around the uh, raged areas of so the rivets and um, areas like that. And then once that's on, I'm going over the beam with the oil stain uh, component. And uh, so again, the same with the um, burnt red. I'm just uh, placing this on haphazardly, uh, blending it in to give it a more metal and bone look. And I'll be um, weathering the infrastructure of the wings and um, other parts that have the bare metal parts um, like this all the way through the build. One thing to note on here, as you can see, one of the cross beams does actually come in two parts. Um, it's just for the, the thickness of the wall and the way it connects to the ring, I believe. So uh, again, make sure your locations are on these and uh, you're putting the um, thicker one um, in the proper position. With the recess point, you can see the line there just on, on the bottom um, of the unit. It should butt up against it and the other one won't fit that well. So it is difficult to get it wrong, but you can get it wrong. Next are the supporting uh, beams that fit onto the spindle and um, the, uh, the ends are fit into the cross beams. Now the instructions say fit the drop cross beam first. I had a look at it and I thought it was easier to fit one cross beam, which is on there, and then put these um, supports in first. They can be tricky to, to get in, they actually go through the two uh, side uh, support bars there, and uh, then they fit onto uh, either the support bar, where there's three points, uh, connection points there, and one point goes onto the cross beam. I hope you can follow that, it's a, it's a little bit complicated. So once you get them in the base position then you, you can use your tweezers just to manoeuvre the points um, to how, how they should go. There is little recess points on the uh, end support beams uh, for them to lay onto. Just remember it goes through the, um, the gaps on these beams and not over. This applies particularly to the bottom one you think it it should go um, over the front of it but it doesn't quite fit and you think oh have I got in the wrong position but uh, once you actually put it through the girder then you realize that that's how it's meant to go so then it was a 
It's unlucky as they're putting the other uh, support beam on and uh, fitting it into place. Before I start the main wing construction, I'm painting a lot on the sprue here just to get it done out of the way. The only paint difference is time you use it, say 84 dark iron and this is uh, for the springs that hold um, the uh, mechan mechanical part that uh, lowers um, the, the, the um, flat. You don't really have to paint this in, you may not see it, but um, because I'm uh, having uh, one side of the wing exposed, the interior exposed, I, I thought I was better to do it. I should note as well, um, these um, hinges for the flats, there's uh, two different uh, types you can put in. One for the open position, and um, well the downward position, and one for the normal and flight position. So um, again, you're going to have to make a choice. Uh, how you want to display the model. I'm having mine in the downward position. So for now that's the um, middle section uh, complete. I don't know um, how much I'm going to have exposed on this uh, little part here. Uh, I won't um, decide on that until I actually attach the, the wings. Before I can make up the infrastructure I'm just painting uh, in the cockpit green the XF71 the um, inner parts of the wing. This includes the bed that the, the um, flaps are going to lay on. Depending on again what position you're going to have the flaps is whether you do this or not. But I always recommend doing it anyway because even when they're close you can probably uh, see glimpses of the inner working. So now on to the infrastructure. Now there's various um, uh, cross beams and sport beams you have to place in here. They, they are individual so be careful when you're taking them off the sprue, you get them in the right order. And um, even for on the wing here, you can see um, where, where the rest of them are just pointing out there. Um, dry fit before you fit them. Again, if you get them in the wrong position, you'll find later on down the build, it will probably be a pro uh, cause a problem. Um, particularly for the placement of the weapons. But it, there is a channel that runs down the wing as you can see here and it does fit in rather nicely and it can dry fit without you having to glue it which is good if you're doing what I'm doing. This wing won't actually um, be attached. Uh, well I don't think it will at this stage um, but I've painted it anyway just in case. So this will be the exposed wing that um, I'll be having on display. Now whether I um, keep it on the bottom part of the wing or just leave the bottom part of the wing off um, I'm still not sure I'm happy through the, the building of the wing and uh, I'm still not sure yet I won't know until I place the actual other wing on fully formed that's the compartment that holds the machine guns um, built up now it's uh, time to uh, place in the main beams again one uh, side you have to make up uh, two parts. The other side is just a free uh, part on its own. But dry fit these as you go along. You will have to, um, they are a bit tight so you want to make sure they're right down in, in the seat so they're flush with the rest of the uh, grid. So that's the uh, main um, interior part done for the uh, structure work. Um, as you can see here it, it should fit in. There's uh, a couple of location points for the base plate to sit on and um, that, that pushes down snugly into the fit so um, you want to check the fit. You can also build this on the wing if you wish um, so you wouldn't have um, to do this but I also build it off just to make sure. So now that um, that part's done um, I'll be extending this actual infrastructure uh, to almost the entire length of the wing. Now I, I'm doing this uh, using some plastic card and all I'm doing is measured out the, the length that I wanted and um, then I um, started building. Now some parts are a bit thicker than the card that I've got so I'm just um, doubling or, or tripling up the um, slats that I'm going to be using to um, simulate the, the same thickness. So the the two um, extensions I'm putting on, also there's one part that's going to be a lot longer than the other part. Um, 
it because um, or else they one been cut off before the other bit. You also want to uh, make sure you get the height uh, done properly as well. So um, as it, as it goes down the wing, it's going to the depth is going to get smaller and smaller. So all I did was um, drew in a diagonal line and snipped off uh, to the um, roughly to my line before sanding it down. So now I'm just sanding down the part um, to get uh, a smooth finish. So I wasn't happy with the shape. I'm um, having to create some holes. So I'm using my pin drill uh, just to make the pilot holes in this. And then I'm taking my hobby knife and twisting it around inside the hole uh, to open it up and make it into larger. Um, this is again to simulate the, the beams that's going to be connected to. Um, uh, of course the airframe uses as less metal as possible to keep the plane light, hence why the girders all have holes in them. Next I have to recreate the markings on the beam for the rivets and so forth. So I'm doing this using tape and uh, I'm taking a bit of masking tape and um, cutting very thin um, pieces of the masking tape and um, just laying it down, wrapping it around the part and once painted that will simulate um, raised panel areas and um, the rivets and so forth. So as you can see here, I've um, done it with all, all the beams and the cross beams. And now I'm just going to be gluing them in position. I've left a little bit of tape at the end there just to hold the part on. And then the last bit goes on. Now, I was going to put the cross beams in like the other two. As you can see on the orange um, mark there, um, I had a bit with the notches cut out. I actually done them too wide and I didn't want to go through it all again making the part so I decided to do a different take on it. So once the, all the lengths are in place it's time to put on the the, the crossbar at the bottom. This will uh, make them all stable with inside the, the grid. Just maneuver them and just maneuver them into position uh, with my um, tweezers there until I'm happy. And for the cross beam, I'm just using a bit of balsa wood here uh, instead of plastic. Mainly because I was able to shape it into fit the notches that I'd already uh, cut out. As I said, I decided not to use them because I, I basically made a mistake and I didn't want to go through it all again. So th this will do it. I'm happy with it. It may not necess necessarily be the way it should be, but I think it um, will suffice. So uh, time to check for the fitting. Make sure you've got the uh, back plate lined up if you're doing this. That way you'll know whether the um, the the unit that you've built is uh, all nice and square. It should be if, if you've, your measurements are even slightly off, you should be all right. So there it is in there. Now there's um, a, a couple of little brackets there to be put in for where the flaps go in. So I'm just uh, snipping off a uh, little slithers of plastic. Um, to line up where the brackets are going to be and then it's a simple matter of just attaching them to the side in position where the hinges or brackets will actually be. Then once they're on I would suggest um, just uh, laying them on then placing the unit back on the wing before uh, moving the, um, the, the little brackets or hinges in position. So well, this brings part 4 to a close. Um, just got a little bit of weathering to do on the part once the paint dries. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds or indeed the um, videos for this build. You can subscribe to the channel for up, for the, any updates and um, hit that like button and of course leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.